decided that the best way to stop the hurt and the depression and, and everything that kind of coincided with my gambling would be to, to look at self-destruction. The gambling industry currently spends in excess of £1.5 billion a year on advertising and over half of young people said that they had seen or heard gambling advertising via online or offline platforms. I want to find out why more isn't being done to protect the young people against the dangers of gambling. I can totally see now from the outside looking in how it's everywhere. I want to know why gambling companies are allowed to target people who may be susceptible. I wanted to hear from people who have gone through the trauma that gambling causes. I have come here to a Gamblers Anonymous meeting in the heart of Birmingham, which is run every Tuesday for people looking to seek support with their gambling addiction. I am sitting down with some of the attendees who were kind enough to lend me their time. Thanks for uh, taking the time. No problem, thank you. Thank you. My first question is, uh, how young were you when you first started gambling? That's a good question. Um, my earliest memories are gambling. Um, yeah. So, slightly older than you, so it's a bit different. But when I was a kid, we'd go on day trips. You get a Blackpool, you get a real Western Supermare, wherever it might yeah. be. And uh, inevitably, you would end up on the pier. Yeah. And for me, my earliest gambling memories are playing the, the slot machines, the two 10p slot yeah. machines. Um, because you, you even now you see keep people, kids especially with a pot of two peas. Yeah. Those are my earliest memories. I would say it started off with her in the arcades, when you know you didn't really think that I had a problem with gambling at that time, but it was like um, with the arcades. I was always spend my time in the arcades when I went on holiday with the family and everything like yeah. that. And it was the fact that I couldn't get enough of it basically. So, first time I was ever introduced to it would have been something about 11 or 12. And my mum was dating a guy at the time who was obsessed with the horse racing. And um, the Grand National was on. Yeah. And he was like, I remember he was on the phone to his friend, like, getting all the tips. Oh, and I, I was like, what the hell is he going on about? Um, and then he was like, to be nice, he was like, oh, you and your sister can have a pound each. Just pick a horse. So I just picked a random number. This is the first time I was introduced to it. For gambling companies, 60% of their profits come from gambling addicts, and those are the ones that they target with advertising. Gambling sites track what websites you visit, what social media accounts you follow, how long since you last bet, what you bet, and keep track of betting patterns to know what customers are addicts, and then use this information to target those addicts make sure that they keep betting by sending them incentives. As from an early age, I don't know, they say they've had some programs on and say, does um, the lights fascinate you? I don't know whether the lights used to fascinate me or what, mm. but it always used to be. I was drawn to fruit machines and then obviously as it progressed, the roulette machines. So I don't know whether it was the lights to or something triggers something off, yeah. I ain't got a clue. Purely because my first, <clears throat> it was about flashing lights to me initially um, with playing fruit machines. One thing I've never really done is go to the bookies. Mm -hmm. I was never really, it's weird from a gambler um, or a reformed gambler, but it never did anything for me. Mine was about the quick wins. According to an online survey conducted by the Gambling Commission, overall, 85% of people who answered have ever seen gambling adverts or sponsorships, with 83% seeing adverts and 78% seeing any sponsorships. One of the industries where this is most prominent is the sports industry. Research shows that professional footballers are three times more likely to have gambling problems compared to other young men, and in the last two years, over 150 current or former players undergone treatment for gambling addictions. Research shows that gambling logos can appear more than 700 times during televised football matches. That's once every 10 seconds. 
This is why it's no wonder that so many young children are being introduced to gambling at such a young age. Do you think that, I know you touched on it just then, but sports sponsorship like shirt sponsors or stadium sponsors even, do you think that influenced you to gamble or even, like you said, the younger generation, do you think that had influenced them to gamble? Or I think, introduce them to it, normalise it? I think it does now, more so, because... It didn't with me personally, yeah. but I think now more so when you've got younger kids growing up and have got the heroes yeah. and they see Unibet and all mm. that kind of thing on the shirts of the football team. Yeah, yeah. And I think that does influence the baddies more nowadays. So let's say a shirt sponsors or stadium sponsors, do you think that normalises it for younger people who are, like you said, when they leave up sports matches and like watching that? Do you think that normalises it or normalise it for you? Yeah, I know I do. Um, I went to the match on Sunday and the, I, I listened to a conversation between probably two 13, 14-year-olds uh, that were talking about first first goal scorer and how, because they both had mobile phones, yet they were under 18, but they both had a gambling app on the phone. Now... You would hazard a guess that that's them because they was with the pair, they was with the dad, but if there's no real safeguard in there, it, it's yes, you've got to be over eighteen to to download an app. But if a parent does that for you, mm. and then you're having that conversation about who's going to score first, both teams to score, yeah, it, it it's there, it's in the face. Currently, the gambling industry spends in excess of 1.5 billion on advertising every year. They use feel good music and show people having fun with their friends. To trigger emotions in people and make it seem harmless. Tighter restrictions need to be put in place for gambling advertisements to stop this from happening.